Did Sebastian Vettel finally win at Hockenheim? Or could Lewis Hamilton starting from 14th place respond to Vettel? Find out in this video. When the race started at Hockenheim, it was very nice and sunny. But oh boy, when the rain came, it did change this race, allowing Lewis Hamilton from 14th to win the race. Hamilton wins from Bottas second, Raikkonen third, Verstappen in fourth, and Nico Hülkenberg in fifth. Then it's Grosjean sixth, Perez seventh, Ocon eighth, Ericsson ninth, and Brendan Hartley in tenth. And then K-Mag, Sainz, Van Dorn, Gasly and Leclerc all missed out on points. As Fernando Alonso, Lance Stroll, Sebastian Vettel, Sergei Sorokin and Daniel Ricciardo all retired from the Grand Prix. But now let's look at how the top three teams got on. Heading into the race, the chances of a Mercedes win was not looking that great. With Bottas not massively fast in second and Hamilton down in 14th. But eventually through all that chaos, they did get it with Lewis Hamilton. After he made his way up to 5th by getting past all of those midfield teams and then deliberately extended his first stint so he could put on those ultra soft tyres. Which was a brilliant strategy decision by Mercedes as he closed very quickly on his teammates and the two Ferraris. But the key moment that won the race for Mercedes was Sebastian Vettel crashing and the safety car being deployed. Because as the safety car was deployed both Valtteri Bottas and Kimi Raikkonen pitted when Hamilton did not. Even though he actually wasn't supposed to as at the last minute he cut the pit entry line to stay out on the circuit. Now when he met with the stewards he only got a reprimand for this and I have to agree because it was not his fault. It was the team's miscommunication which caused him to do so, so I don't really see how Hamilton should have been punished. But after the safety car came in he brilliantly defended from his teammate Valtteri Bottas and would hold him off for the rest of the race as he won the German Grand Prix. Was he a bit lucky? Yes of course he was but he had to be in that position to capitalise. And it would be Valtteri Bottas completing the Mercedes 1-2. And I think you can say that Bottas did get unlucky in terms of the race result. Because when Bottas pitted it took 15 seconds for the pit stop to end. Because the team simply was just not ready for him to come in. And when he tried to get past Lewis on the safety car restart he just could not make it happen. And then was told to stay behind and he did and he finished in second place. Now I know some people will not agree with those team orders but I actually do. No matter what you think Bottas is not in the championship fight but Lewis is. So they absolutely have to support Lewis's championship bid. So for me that is completely understandable as they got the 1-2 finish. And considering their pace compared to Ferrari this weekend that makes this result even better. And could prove at the end of the season to be very very important. For most of the race it was going so well for Sebastian Vettel as he was comfortably leading the race but then when the rain came down it was disaster as into the stadium section at the hairpin he went wide and went into the barriers in what was by his own admittance his mistake as Vettel not for the first time has blown a race victory. Just think of Canada in 2011, Turkey in 2010 and Singapore last year. Places where he really could have won those races but he just blew it. And it just seems like a side of Sebastian Vettel that will never go away. And is definitely going to have some effect on the World Championship once we get to Abu Dhabi. Will it be the turning point in the World Championship? Who knows really. But it will be a slight turning point for now and the next couple of races. Also just to mention Sebastian Vettel did lose a part of his front wing just before that accident. But did it have an effect on the crash? If it did have an effect I think it is still a small one. And mostly for me, that is Sebastian Vettel's fault. For Kimi Raikkonen though, despite the team orders, I think he had a good race. In the first stint, his pace I'd say was kind of decent, but then pitted much earlier than Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel and jumped them in the pit stops. But it did become clear that Kimi Raikkonen was on a much different strategy, which is why Ferrari ordered Kimi Raikkonen to let Sebastian Vettel pass. Now again I do understand why people are not happy about this but I still agree with this decision. Sebastian was much faster on a better strategy and was on fresher tyres. And of course he is going for the championship which Kimi is not. So the only logical thing was to let Sebastian go past Kimi. Because no matter what you think Formula 1 is a team sport and the team Ferrari comes first. So it just really had to be done. And after all the chaos Kimi pitted under the safety car came out in third and finished there as well as Ferrari are now licking their wounds going into Hungary. Much like qualifying again it was quiet for Red Bull, 
Max Verstappen on the first lap and throughout the race was trying everything to try and get a podium. He tried to pass Kimi on the first lap but just could not get it done. And then when the rain came early he put the Inters on in a massive gamble. But that didn't work so he went back to the dry tyres and finished in fourth. Max in the Red Bull just did not have the pace to get a podium, simple as that. But for his teammate Daniel Ricciardo it was not good. He started on the medium tyres and very slowly made his way through the field as his medium tyres were just not working for him. But nonetheless he got his way to 6th but then his car broke down with some absolutely rotten luck. And hopefully for Daniel that will not result in a penalty for the Hungarian Grand Prix because he already had to change parts of his engine going into this race. So hopefully there's no issues for Hungary where Red Bull really should have the fastest car. And of course after this race the driver's standings have changed. Lewis Hamilton now leads by 17 points from Sebastian Vettel with Kimi Raikkonen in third. But Kimi is only 11 points ahead of his fellow Finn Valtteri Bottas. As Ricardo is only 1 point ahead of Max Verstappen for 5th place. Again the championship taking a wild swing. But now let's take a look at how the midfield teams did at Hockenheim. For McLaren it ended up being another pointless affair despite early in the race looking like they could get something with Fernando Alonso. But once the rain came, their car was just so, so poor, as they were going off the track and just really had no pace. But I will say that Stoffel did well to finish 13th, considering he had a massive problem during the race. And he did get going again and finish in 13th, but again, it was a pointless affair for McLaren. For Renault with their German driver Nico Hülkenberg, it was a great result finishing 5th in his best home result of his career. And I have to say he does thoroughly deserve it because he had the pace to get that position. Of course, yes, Sebastian Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo retiring did help a lot, but still he had the pace and capitalised well on other people's errors. But he wasn't too smart from Carlos Sainz's side. He was running well on the points and then when the safety car came out, he passed a car during the safety car, giving him a 10 second penalty, which ultimately would go on to cost him a point. And what I have to say was very poor from Carlos, but at the end of the day, mistakes happen. And at least Renault got 10 very important points from Nico Hülkenberg for the Constructors' Championship. Despite their pace not being that great in qualifying, Force India's race was brilliant. Finishing up there in 7th and 8th with Perez and Ocon. And Sergio Perez, I have to say, was very good in this race, performing some overtakes and showing some good speed. And at the end of the race, he almost held on to 6th, but Roman Grosjean ultimately got him. And Ocon also did well after starting on the Ultrasoft tyres and running very long into this Grand Prix. And for sure, he gained a lot during that safety car period. But again, you have to be there to capitalise if you're going to score some kind of points. As this result now takes Force India joint 5th with Haas. And this just shows you how good of a result this really is. Because the Constructors Championship battle for Force India is very, very important right now. So for Force India going into the rest of the season, more races like this will do very nicely. Sergei Sorokin did start from 12th place, but did have a very poor start. Dropping to almost the back of the grid. And from then on in, the Williams again just showed poor pace. And then when the rain came, both Williamses had reliability issues, meaning that both of them had to retire rendering another race useless for Williams. Despite the pace of the car not being great, Toro Rosso still scored points, with Brendan Hartley getting his second points finish of 2018. And even though, yes, he was lucky with certain people's penalties and retirements, I do think he deserved it, because he stayed out of trouble, he showed enough pace to be in that kind of position, and deserves it for the hard work he puts in at every race weekend. So I am happy for him and the Toro Rosso team as well. And this is good news for the team as they head to Hungary where they should be a lot better. So maybe now we could see Toro Rosso start to score some points again. Once again for Haas it was looking so great but then just fell apart. At one point Magnussen was 5th with Roman Grosjean in P7. But after it started raining the Haas team just panicked. Go from dries to intermediates back to dry tyres again they just did not know what to do. And that massively cost K-Mag as he finished outside of the points when he did not deserve to. Because for a long time in the race he was at the front of that midfield battle. So I do feel sorry for him as he was robbed of quite a lot of points. But Grosjean did well to climb his way back into the points and get P6 with some very good pace. Passing Perez on the penultimate lap to do so. But again Haas kind of bottled it. 
and they may rue that because going into Hungary they're not going to be massively fast. Definitely not as quick as they were this weekend or at Silverstone, as the team continues to throw away points. Once again in the race, Sauber scored points, but not with the driver you were expecting, as Marcus Ericsson brilliantly finished in P9. And because of this, I do have to give Marcus my Driver of the Day award, because he was very consistent, always going for overtakes, and had some very good pace in a car that was not that quick, and thoroughly deserved to get some points, and is doing well in 2018. But for Charles Leclerc, it was rather forgettable. He has had good pace all weekend long, but in the race he just did not seem to hook it up, as he spun his car a couple of times and generally struggled in the wet conditions. But I'm sure once we get to the Hungarian Grand Prix, he will bounce back and wow us all again. So I think from Charles's point of view, this is just a one-off. But now let's look at how the teams are doing in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes are now back to the top with Ferrari in second and Red Bull in third with Mercedes only having an 8-point advantage. But in this tight midfield battle, it has changed a bit. Renault are still 4th, but Force India and Haas are tied for 5th, and McLaren are continuing to drop away in P7. But with Force India and Haas, it looks like it's going to be a massive battle between now and Abu Dhabi. And at the bottom of the Constructors, Tor and at the bottom of the constructors Toro Rosso are still just ahead of Sauber. But I do think eventually that Sauber will pass Toro Rosso because the Sauber is just faster. As Williams, of course, are still bottom of it all. And I have to say that once again, we had another really good F1 race. You had a good race at Austria, a great race at Silverstone, and this race was very good as well. Providing all kinds of drama that you would expect in F1. And hopefully, once we go to Hungary, this will continue. As F1 and the Championship battle now rolls on to Budapest. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back on the channel in 3 hours time with a live Q&A. It's going to last about 30 minutes and should be taking place very soon if it's not happened already. So make sure all of you guys check that out. And as well, if you want to join the Chat HDF1 Discord community, the link to that is in the description. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what do you think about all the talking points from the German Grand Prix. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chatter HD. goodbye.